Hey, I'm a set, but not just any set. I'm not empty. And I'm a binary operation. Here's how I work. I take two elements from the set and combine them to get another one, which must still belong to the same set. In real life, you often see me as addition or multiplication, but in general, just call me asterisk. But hold on, it's not enough for me to be any operation. To form a group, we have to follow three fundamental rules. First rule, associativity. If we have three elements, it doesn't matter where we put the parentheses. Second rule, the identity element. There exists a special element, let's call it E, such that combining it with any element doesn't change the result. Third rule, the inverse. Every element A has a twin called A inverse. Now, if a set has a binary operation that satisfies all three of these properties, then congratulations, we've got a group. But wait, there's more. If the operation also satisfies the commutative property, meaning the order of the elements doesn't matter, then we call it an abelian group. Let's look at a concrete example. Consider the set of integers with the operation of addition. This is a perfect example of an abelian group. The number zero acts as the identity element. Adding zero to any integer doesn't change it. Every integer has an inverse under addition, it's opposite. So the inverse of n is minus n and their sum is zero. All the inverses stay inside the set of integers. So we don't need to go outside the set to find them. And of course, addition is both associative and commutative. So all the required properties are there. So far, so good. But here's something important. The same set might or might not be a group, depending on the operation we choose. For example, if instead of addition, we use multiplication, then the integers no longer form a group. Yes, there's a multiplicative identity, the number one but we're missing something essential, the inverses. Not every integer has a multiplicative inverse that's also an integer. Take the number two, for instance. There's no integer that you can multiply by two to get one. The only number that does that is one half, which isn't an integer. This means that even though we're working with the same set, the operation changes everything. And here are some of the simplest and most famous groups you'll encounter in algebra. But be careful, this was just a quick introduction to groups. There's a lot more to explore. If you want to learn more, let me know in the comments.